we're back at it again. This video is gonna be on vibrato. Uh, so, uh, just like a couple of disclaimers. Vibrato on violin takes a long time to learn. That's just one of the things I think on violin that's a little bit different from every other instrument is that a lot of the early techniques take so long to learn. That's just how the instrument is, and I wouldn't really say that it's more of a learning curve type of thing. It's just, violin takes a long time. It's, just, it's not like piano, but I promise you every instrument has the point where it takes forever to learn things, and the learning curve goes down. In violin, the complete opposites are right. On violin, you don't get better, you slowly get gradually better and better and better and better and better. And other instruments are like, you start, and then you go up, and it just keeps going up, and then eventually it stops, and then eventually it stops. Well, every instrument stops eventually, and it takes a lot more to improve and to see your improvement. So just know, vibrato takes a long time. So I thought we'd start with exercises on how to even do it without your instrument. So again, the best practice that we ever can do is actually without our instrument because our brain is sending signals to our hands to do something on the instrument, right? And so one thing we could do is practice our posture, right? Like before, and then we're just gonna pretend like we have our violin and pull our head backwards, like we're like serving a pizza or something like that, and then pull our hand forwards towards us. So away from us and towards us. Away from us, towards us. Away from us, towards us. And now we want to start moving our arm with this motion, right? Because there's two, I'll explain this in other videos, but there's, we pretty much need our entire arm to do this, right? And so now we did this forwards and backwards. Now we're going to do this left and right. Just having our hand go left and right. And pretend like you're the Queen of England. You know how she's like, hello, everybody. <laughs> that was probably like the worst <laughs> impression ever. But we're gonna do this left, right, 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 left, right. You're probably like, how does this have anything to do with vibrato? I promise you, it does. Then we're gonna go forwards and backwards, forwards and backwards, left, right, left, right, forwards and backwards. And just kind of mess around with this. Maybe you go right, left, up, down. And if you remember from that video where I talked about the bow and how we went up, down, left, and right, now you're starting to see that the hands may be doing different signals to the, the same signals to the, to, oh, I'm gonna put this in a different way. We are always sending almost the same signals to both hands. It's just that the signals have a different output from what we send, right? So on the right hand, when we go up and down and left and right, you know, those change up bow and down bow. But here where we go up and down and left and right, these all of these things are changing which string we're on and this kind of thing. And also these impulses become smaller when we want to do vibrato. And so one really good exercise, and I have a little hypothesis why I think vibrato is so difficult. I think vibrato is actually a two against three polyrhythm in the left hand, if that makes any sense, if you know anything about piano. And so this polyrhythm is really hard to learn. And uh, once you learn it, then you have it. But I think getting this polyrhythm is difficult. So I'm not really sure how I'm going to teach this polyrhythm, but uh, if I'll make another video about that, if it's true or not, I'm not sure if my hypothesis is true. So we did this left, thumb, left right, dum, 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 dum. And just mess around with that, right? And so again, we're isolating the left hand. There's no reason to use the right hand at the moment. The right hand is doing its own thing. We don't need the right hand at the moment. We're concentrating on the left. And so now that we have our violin, we're going to go forwards, back, left, right. Let's do that a couple of times. Forwards, back, left, right. And the reason that we go right to left or right or left to right, a lot of people when they're vibrato, they actually tense up their elbow and then this part of their muscles aren't really moving. But to actually have a really, it's like a singer, a good singer can go, ah, or, ah, ah, you know, they could change the speed, right? And how much the frequency is 
oscillating. We want to be able to do the same thing. So we're going to go forwards, back, left, right. And then we're going to eventually just go from polishing the string. My teacher taught me this. This was such a good, this was such a good exercise. So we're just going to go up and down, up and down on all the strings. And then we're going to try to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And you should see that I'm going to maybe try to exaggerate the motion. You should see, you can put all the fingers down, just one of the fingers, it doesn't matter. But you're going to do this polishing the string motion and get faster and faster. And if you see my arm, it's like moving with me. It's not, because then the um, wrist has to work really hard. So again, we're always trying to get the most optimal amount of movement in all the muscles. So do this again and get faster and faster and faster and faster. And then eventually this vibrato motion should come. But again, I think it's a two against three rhythm. And because it's a two against three rhythm, it's more difficult. Because actually I think for real vibrato, let me demonstrate, is um, it's really easy to learn on um, harmonics. But anyway, so. I'll, uh, that was a little bit far <laughs> from what we were doing. But just keep working on these exercises. Oh, sorry, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> just keep working on these exercises on all the strings. It's polishing the string, getting smaller. Without your instrument, this is forward, backs, left, and right. Just keeping your hand loose. Oh, and I have one other um, tip is uh, we can now practice back and forwards now. So. And I used to tell, I told one of my students that we want to actually hit the peg. Okay, well, I'm not hitting it that hard, right? But just, you can knock on the pegs. So hit the pegs and then go back to first position. Hit the pegs and go back to first position. Hit the pegs and go back to first position. And if we can do the same thing at the body of the instrument, we can go, oh, what is this? We can hit the body of the instrument with our hand. And mind you, throughout all of this, my thumb is very loose. Loose isn't really a good word. My thumb is very agile. Agile, that's a good word. <laughs> you know, it's kind of going with the hand. It's not, if our thumb is not moving with us, then the rest of the fingers have to move a lot. So just run into the body of the instrument like this. And then also hit the pegs of the instrument. And so I would work on these exercises these are, again, vibrato takes a while to learn. So five minutes a day for about two to three weeks. Or maybe if you feel that you've mastered all of these things and all of these movements, then you can click on the next video that I will be posting about putting it all, not putting it all together, but things you can actually do with notes. And uh, hope this video was helpful and happy practicing.